Yes, hello, this is an introductory recording sitting in my RV-7A with a G3X screen and a GTN-750. Uh, also, I have a audio panel, a GMA-245, my autopilot controller, the GMC-307. And um, the reason I'm making this video is to help introduce people to the G3X system. I plan on doing some flying videos. So this one is actually done while I'm on the ground at Northwest Regional Airport. I'm in the hangar. It's taken me a little while to get the brightness adjustments quite right on the uh, GTN and uh, G3X so that they show up properly on the camera. Um, and when I'm flying, this is the view that you're going to have while I'm flying. So, but I want to do this video on the ground so that, uh, and I'm going to actually have the camera while I'm flying set up over about right here so you can see the full G3X screen in front of me, my PFD. Uh, but there's some other equipment in the plane that would be useful to know that's here so that when you see the in the air videos, you understand the entire system. Let me uh, pan over to my left, and you will see the G5 backup attitude indicator that I have. Now, it's a great backup instrument, but the thing, quite honestly, that I use it mostly for is to use the barrow control knob, because this knob lets me set the uh, altimeter setting by just twisting this knob. So you can see on the G5 that I've got the altitude setting, the barrel setting here, but that is also reflected on the G3X down here at the bottom of the screen and uh, the uh, somewhere of the altitude tape. So what I'm going to do then is, uh, first I'm going to actually mute my iPad. I'm, I'm viewing this on my iPad so I can see what I'm panning to. But I had a little bit of audio feedback there. Uh, so this makes it real simple to set the barrow on the G3X. If I weren't, if I didn't have the G5, in order to do the barrow, I'd come down, touch this, and now I have my barrow set in, and I can punch in the actual numbers, or I can use the knob here to control the numbers, and then hit enter. And uh, that would be the way I would do that if I did not have the G5. The other thing that I have over here is a secondary screen. Let me pan camera over this way. And so there I have my other 10-inch uh, G3X screen running in full screen mode. Uh, that's full screen traffic that I have up there right now. And when I'm fly flying solo, this is often the way I fly have a full traffic screen up on the uh, right screen, and uh, it just is a quick way to be able to look at any traffic that's in the area, even though the traffic that shows up on the on the map here is really the most useful, but it's pretty fun playing with the full screen one too. And then the other thing that I can do is, if I have another pilot with me, I will fly that in uh, split screen mode so that the other pilot has a normal flight display and can see everything that's going on. But I'm going to go ahead and put this back into full screen mode. That's how I fly with it. And then the other thing that I thought I would mention uh, that while I'm doing these videos, I have the camera sitting. Uh, I have a, a mount that I made that mounts between the two seats, and then I have a ram mount that brings the camera. Uh, about six inches to the left and forward of me, so uh, my right arm is somewhat restricted onto where I can, what I can reach. In order to uh, reach the other panel, I have to get my arm out and around. Similarly, I have to reach behind the camera to come in and, and reach over to the uh, some of the stuff on the G3X to hit some of these screens over here. Um, but I have no problem doing the most important stuff, which is my uh, throttle controls, which I'll go ahead and I'll pan down to the throttle controls, of course, which are right below. I've got my you know, prop mixer 
uh, and uh, throttle down there, right below. But those are going to be out of sight while I'm flying most of the time. So let's go back and just do a few quick things about the G3X. I don't want to do too much on the ground because it's really, you know, the ground stuff. You've probably seen you know, static displays and static displays, displays are easy to find. So it's really the flying part that I, I hope to be able to differentiate the videos that I'm doing. But I just want to give an overview of what my full setup is. Of course, uh, just an inter intro to some things. One of the things I've uh, learned using this system that one of the best features of this whole system is the flight director. So I, I always fly with the flight director on. Uh, right now it is turned off and this field right at the top, which is empty right now, uh, doesn't get populated in turn until you turn the flight director on. That get turned on by either hitting the toga button or by hitting the flight director button on the autopilot control panel. So that brings some information up into the scoreboard, that little box right there. Right now it's telling me that I'm in roll mode and I'm in pitch mode. Those are things, and then the other fields that show here are, are critical to be monitoring those all the time. Even when I'm hand flying, I try to keep the flight director in sync with what I'm doing. So, uh, and then the other thing is, is I've set this up to do a dual queue flight director, so I've got the two lines. Uh, a lot of people prefer a single queue flight director. If you like a single queue, uh, that is something that is uh, an available option that you can do, but I'm going to be doing all my flights with the dual queue director. Uh, maybe I will do, maybe I'll switch it over to a dual queue at one point and fly with that just to demo what that looks like. So my normal takeoff procedure that goes, I'll do exactly what I did. I turn the flight director on, then I'll go over to my toga button. I don't think I showed that when I was panning over before. Let me go back and pan over to uh, where my toga button is. It's uh, right next to the autopilot control panel. So right down here is my toga button. And so when I hit my toga button, let me get back to the main screen, come back to the main screen. And when I, so when I hit my toga button, the scoreboard now goes to TOTO, uh, -to, which is for takeoff, takeoff. If I were in the flight and I were doing an approach, it would go go around, GA for go around. Um, but normally what I do is when I'm sitting at the end of the runway, I'll hit turn the flight director on, hit the toga button, set my heading to whatever heading I want to be. So let's say you know, at this airport, uh, normal heading is 170. So I will set my heading bug to 170, turn that. So I got my heading bug set there to 170. It also shows up in the little box over here as a heading. And then I'll put the flight director into heading mode. So it's now in heading mode, takeoff mode. And then once I take off, I'll be climbing up at uh, five degrees of, of pitch. You can see the flight director, the, the uh, lateral director, lateral bar is now offset because I turned that heading. But if I would turn my heading back, I can bring it back in. And of course, the fast, the fast way to do that is just to push the button, and that syncs with my uh, current heading. Uh, the other thing on takeoff that I always do is to select an initial altitude. So I dial that in. Now, again, if I push the altitude button, it syncs with my existing altitude. So right there, uh, by pushing that button, it synced to 750 feet. But let's say I wanted to do my initial climb out to 2,500. You know, I was doing an instrument flight. I got a clearance to go, you know, 2,500 initial. Uh, so I dial in the 2,500, and there it is at the top of the tape. I now have an altitude select icon that's in white that's telling me that it's it's armed and it uh, wants to go to that altitude. So even if I'm hand flying it, I'm still going to get warnings and messages that are going to tell me that I'm getting ready to capture uh, my 2,500 foot altitude, and then. Uh, and then it will go solid green when I do capture. And uh, also, if I'm flying uh, with my autopilot on, 
I'll get the same kinds of alerts. So I like keeping the flight director synced at all time, even when you're hand flying. It's really a, a good way to fly, as I've learned. You know, this equipment, when I first got it, I really it had more capability than I even understood when I installed it. Uh, luckily, I had a, uh, a CFI that I like to fly with uh, that flies biz jets for a living when he's not flying uh, small GA planes, and he showed me how to get the most out of this uh, Garmin equipment. Because even though he doesn't have Garmin in his uh, his jet, is that functionally it works exactly like the stuff he's got in, in his uh, in his jet that, that he flies for a bunch of rich people. Um, of course, it's not his jet; it belongs to somebody else. Uh, so the other thing, and if I were to turn my autopilot on, uh, then I. That I get the in indicator that my autopilot is on. So now I know the autopilot's on. I'm in heading mode. I'm in takeoff mode. Uh, you can see I'm getting the trim indicator. Uh, let's go ahead and turn the autopilot back off. Just uh, so that, uh, and it's doing that. If I were to turn my altitude, if I synced it up, that I wouldn't give. It's trying to trim. So again, if I uh, say so turn my autopilot on right now. I'm not trying to climb, so I don't get that, that trim indicator. Uh, so I can have the autopilot on. Uh, oh, I actually do get the trim indicator still. But uh, maybe because I need to go there, 740 feet. But let's go ahead and just turn that autopilot off. Uh, rarely do you ever have to do any manual trim in this plane. As a matter of fact, almost never, because uh, it's got auto trim on the servo on the pitch servo, so when you're flying along, uh, the plane stays in trim all, all the time. And uh, and then after I take off, I'd go to vertical speed mode, so I'd hit vertical speed, and then just pick the vertical speed that I want. So if I want to go, say, up to uh, at 500 feet a minute, I'd pick 500 feet per minute as a vertical speed. Uh, some of the other things that are interesting to see, some of the other pages, of course I got my map page which I can zoom in and you can move around, you can do pinch zoom or you can move around. I've got a chart page which has a VFR sectional, it also has an instrument page. Uh, the waypoint page is uh, one of the most useful ones, it shows me the destination of where I'm going. Flight plan which I use, tend to use more on my GTN, the flight plan page. Uh, full weather, uh, terrain, and traffic. And again, this traffic is what I have on my full screen on the other side. Um, if I want to bring up engine instruments, I just touch that bar over there, brings up my engine instruments. So I've got my main instrument, I shows my electrical system, and my uh, fuel. So we're not going to spend too much time on this again on the ground. We'll see some more of this while we're flying. Uh, so let's go back, move move that off. Uh, one of the other things that is something that I use a lot is uh, the minimums. So if you hit the HSI, that comes up. And one of the things that uh, you see there is minimums. If you want to set your minimums, you go in and set the minimum. So let's say you're just even doing a VFR flight and you want your traffic pattern minimum to be, say, 1,800 feet, hit that, and now i got a barrel minimum of 1,800 feet once, or I guess 18,000 feet is what I put in. So let's do that again. Uh, hit, hit the zero, one too many zero there. Okay, 1,800 feet, barrel min. That's why you always need to double check the entry is matching what you th think it says because uh, a barrel min of 18,000 wouldn't do me much good if I was trying to give myself a warning for 1,800. Um, quick overview of the GTN. Let's turn this message off. Uh, you get a lot of messages here. And so the uh, map page is where I run a lot of times, but if you go to the home page, this is where you can select. Again, if I want to go to map, I just hit the map page there. Uh, flight plan, I can go, if I wanted to go direct, I can, I can either find like the nearest airport. Uh, oh, well, I'm not getting a good GPS lock, so that's not gonna, not gonna work well. Uh, so let's do it the other way. Let's go direct, select a waypoint. I can pick a place that I've been to before. 
and let's say uh, Decatur. I'm going to go to Decatur and activate that. So now I can uh, and see because I have no GPS position now since I'm sitting in the hangar right now. Uh, that's why I can pull up in the nearest airport. Um, and then if I wanted to load a procedure there, I can just go home, procedure, approach. It automatically knows the airport that I'm going to since uh, I selected it. Uh, of course, if I wanted to change that, I could just hit that. I could change the airport uh, if I wanted to go to a different uh, airport. And if I'm doing practice approaches, uh, I can pick my approach. I can select my transition, vectors to final. In this case, I got two transitions. Zoomkey is a common one, so let's do the uh, Zoomkey transition. I can then load and activate that approach. Flight plan comes up. You can see it, it draws the whole flight plan on the G3X with all the waypoints. If I go back to my home page or my map page, and again, the quick way to get to that map page is to hold this home button down and you get to the uh, map page. That's the shortcut to go to the map page. And then zoom this out. And the GTN will do pinch zoom, but really using these in and out buttons is the uh, easier way to do it. Um, so then I keep, I keep going out. I was zoomed quite in, and then you can see here I've got the full approach, and it's somewhat being covered up by the uh, warning that I have no GPS position. But the whole approach is loaded on that map also. But the uh, cool thing that I really like is if I go to my waypoint now, so here I go to my waypoint, if I bring up my, go to the charts tab, it automatically knows that I selected the RNAV 1.7 at Decatur. So that defaults there. I don't have to go searching through uh, a bunch of plates. You know, I've tried flying with an iPad just to you know, see how I like that compared to using these plates and uh, I get spoiled by these, these plates on the screen in front of me. So now I've got this screen. I can pin zoom it. I can zoom it with the knob. I can easily move it around. Have that all there. I can, easy to switch back to the map page. If I want to go back to that waypoint, if I want to shrink this down, I can get frequencies. So I can pull up a uh, frequency of where I'm going. So I can load in my AWAS. I can load in my Unicom. Uh, departure, everything is all listed there, easy to find. Uh, and uh, when I pick a frequency, let's say I want to do the uh, departure frequency, pick departure, it gives me a selection. So this is, I've got two radios. I've got my GTN 750. I also have a second radio uh, that's a remote mounted radio. Uh, quite honestly, I can't remember the exact model number of it. Um, but my remote mounted radio uh, is controlled strictly through the G3X. So when I pick a frequency, I can select to either put it into my COM2, which is my remote radio, or COM1, which is my GTN 750. So uh, let's say I want to put it into my GTS 750, I hit COM1, and there that frequency pops up into the standby field of my GTN 750.